shut the gate. They're going to do it again. The Kanaka million goes with and stays with. Kia ora, good evening. You're here with Boys Get Paid. Coming at you live from the Export Beer Garden Studio, courtesy of the Alternative Commentary Collective on another Thursday night, and it's a great Thursday night. We're one night out from the night of champions. The BGP Punters Club is ready to roll. Fitzy's waiting in the wings behind us. He's already spent plenty of your hard-earned. Still got time to get involved. Really looking forward to this weekend with the Waz on Saturday as well. It's good to have you all here with us. I'm Matt. Luke, how are you going, brother? Yeah, really well, mate. Getting excited, getting keen and eager to get down there to Cambridge and see what it's all about, the Night of Champions. Bring it on. Absolutely. Dan, you've had a massive, massive hand in organising this, mate. You've put in uh, God's work getting us to this point, so you must be feeling pretty good about tomorrow night, despite our efforts on Saturday night to derail the whole situation. (laughs) Yeah, mate. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Jeep has... I was putting my brain back together on Wednesday still after last week. But, no, mate, I'm really looking forward to this uh, this week. I love uh, what Dave Branch and um, the team down there have done for this event, and I'm hoping that we can make this like another iconic BGP night and we can really rip into it and we can win some cash. Like we were saying over a hazy beforehand, this is something to build on. Tomorrow night's going to go bloody well, and hopefully next year it'll go even better. But we've got tomorrow night to worry about first, and we've got Fitzy waiting in the wings. Um, here he is. He's down at the, uh, I don't know where he is. He's in Hamilton somewhere, but he's at a cocktail event, although he looks like he's in a stable now. It's good. Oh, that oh. is this guy's in a casino. Oh. Dirty birdie. I Bloody thought he was up. next to a Tesla charger there on the wall, but uh, maybe not. You've not given him the BGP funds, have you, for the casino? Uh, he's got the login details, mate. Send it. Good on you. How are you, Fitzy? Good, boys. Yeah, I'm just here at a event. And... Might visit the guys. Guys, got a bit of patchy audio there, mate. It may be on your phone. Um, yeah. Like, you just you might have your hand on the on the mic on the microphone. You're you work in tech, don't you, Fitzy? You just sort of try that. Sort of yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. You getting excited for tomorrow, mate? Very excited, mate. We've had uh, in a fair bit, so uh, that's the way to do it. We're having a go. He's definitely had an, having a go. We'll, uh, we'll fill in the blanks for you, mate, If because uh, this audio is just a little bit patchy. But you guys have had a third bet for the day uh, and for the Punters Club so far. So you just took the blessed bet, which is a horse called Lincoln Cove, the win insurance. So basically $3.20 uh, for this horse to win. And if it runs second or third, the money comes back. So $15,625 at $3.20 to return 50000 Bet two was a multi Sharky's Girl and Cambridge Race 1 to run top three, so a place bet, and then into We Walk by Faith, and it will be prayers up in race number five because this is a $22,500 bet to return just over a hundred k. Do you want to talk us through any of uh, either of those bets, mate? Yeah, well, Sharky's Girl, uh, Barrier Barrier 1 has gates expecting it uh, hold up there and a hold a forward spot. And uh, I'm pretty happy with five, and then walk by faith. Uh, the best we believe, and was a good price. Yeah, right. So, well, I mean, maybe just to, um, I guess, translate that. Uh, Sharky's girl was drawn one, gets a good barrier draw, might be able to get a nice sit and run along okay, and run a good top three. And we walk by faith, won really well in the New Zealand Derby, ran home well for third and thinks it's a good opportunity now, barrier six, to just get over the top of them. Bring it on, good lad. Fitzy, we'll, we'll let you kick back in there, mate, and tuck into a couple of champagnes. We'll see you down there. Well done on what you've been pulling together. Uh, there's still plenty of time for people to get involved in the Punters Club. You and Matty Markham are trawling all through the form this week. Shit, it feels relieving to not be me for a change. So uh, hopefully you sleep well tonight. Wishing you all the best, mate. We're all in behind you. And I'll give you a cuddle when we get down there tomorrow and 10 of them when we get 10,000... Uh, return in the last on uh, someone. Someone. I, I, anyway. I better not predict who because, you know, people could be listening. Um, so, yeah. Good, good luck, mate. Good on you, Fitzy. It'll be Zach Butcher in the last minute. 
Yeah, well, look. Oh, no, no, wait, that's Don't Stop Dreaming's yeah. race. So if Muscle Mountain oh. gets home, then we've got 100K oh. riding on Don't Stop Dreaming. Disclosure, if the TAV's listening, I have no idea about Harness, so <laughs> I don't know what we're going to bet on or anything like that. So uh, there's going to be a chant for Zach Butcher at some point now, isn't there? Whisper tells me you've had a go at the Bless Bet already, which is at the Harness. <laughs> oh, that was a pretty funny message, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, mate, I'm glad you made an executive decision there because that was quite a difficult one, unfortunately, for Fitzy. He's down there at Sky City enjoying the cocktail event. Yep. Um, Dan, you, mate, you've, like I said, you've put in a shitload of work to uh, to get us to this point, mate. Um, Punters Club's up to 85 grand uh, minus what the bets have already made. What are you hoping to see tomorrow night, mate? Uh, well, tomorrow night I'd like to see the Punters Club close at about 150k. That would be mm. outstanding. That'll really give the lads um, some ammo. Um, the good thing is, is that there's pretty even racing throughout the night. Like, and even the two big races, like we've got a pretty short favourite in the race by grins which is don't stop dreaming which is drawn uh two or three i think and it's paying a dollar 90 um but like the the tab trot race is a pretty open race and all the other races throughout the night there's pretty even and there's pretty good odds so um look i think if we get this night off to a good start there's this this you know there's there's any chance that we could be walking away with a serious serious amount of cash i'd love to take the take the tab for a mil i don't know if they'll let us but that'd be outstanding <laughs> surely well they took half a mil of us on karaka millions night so we're gonna start screwing this ledger back up they bloody owe us mate what about yeah. you luke what are you looking forward to mate hey uh, yeah, i'm gonna get stuck into zachary butcher show us your meat zachary <laughs> to drive three plus winners 21 dollars on the boosted option there's only nine races needs to win a third of them but uh he's a good looking guy and he's my favourite my man crush in the harness. That's what I'm going to get stuck into. Show us your meat, Zachary Butcher, and get three winners, you bastard. I wonder. He must have some good meat. Eh? He's a good-looking fella, I would have thought. Uh, good stuff, mate. All right. What's, well, hey. what's the likelihood he rides, drives three winners? Um, Pretty good, I think. Ooh, yeah, he's got some pretty good drives tomorrow night. I think he's got um, Watch Your Back in race one, which isn't actually the worst opportunity. He's obviously got Merlin um, in... The race by grins, and then he's got uh, Lincoln Cove, which is the oh, yeah. less bet that we have. Yep, um, and then he's got a couple of other good drives throughout the night as Shit, well. I'm getting something on that, yeah. That's me. At twenty ones, was it ZB's ZB's meat? They call it is the option if you go to the <laughs> Night of Champions. <laughs> yeah, he's also got Cold Chisel as well. Now it's going up against us where we we, we walk by faith, but Dead Cold heat. Chisel won the derby. Dead heat scout. Dead heat. How good? Just be careful there, mate. You're logged into the BGP oh, um, account, so yeah, don't. <laughs> Fitzy will kill me if he finds out I've just. <laughs> Whacked a thousand on DB's, uh, <laughs> DB's <laughs> meat. I really hope it comes through for you. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Righto. Well, everybody, thank you as always for joining us. I didn't mention at the top of the show, we've got another $100 to give away to somebody who gets their best bet in for the weekend. We'd love to see something on the harness tomorrow night if you've got a best bet for that. But also, there's great racing this weekend from Ortucky, Rickerton, and of course, day two of the championships at Ramwick on Saturday. So get your best bets coming in. We'll come to those later in the show. We're going to run through a few races. We're going to reflect on last weekend a little bit as well, which is, uh, yeah, like Dan said, we're still sort of putting our pieces back together, but uh, we're okay. We've come through it all right. We had a hell of a day, and we're looking forward to this weekend. On Saturday, the Warriors, we're sold out, lads. It's all happened. The ground's sold out. The BGP Stacey Jones Lounge is sold out for the night. So unfortunately... You guys can't get any tickets, but one man that did get tickets is Jason Momoa. So yes. if you've got tickets, goodness me, how lucky. Yeah, so he's coming. Is he with 30 of his mates? He is, yep. <laughs> he's going to be parked up in his little uh, soft top at the front of the, the bottom of the left, uh, bouncing and making sure that you know nobody that shouldn't doesn't get in. I don't even know who Jason Balboa is, but I'm looking forward to meeting him. <laughs> looking forward to meeting him on Saturday. Make sure you go up and say good day. Looking forward to seeing everybody there on Saturday. And no doubt beforehand, hopefully tomorrow night, everyone has a really, really good time. Before we get uh, reflect on last weekend a little bit, in a couple of weeks' time, the TAB have got a slot in the Quokka, Luke. Yeah, they do. And I think they're racing, well, they are racing at the Big E, Ellerslie, that day. Dare we talk about what happened during the week? Let's, let's come to that. Uh, but basically, the Quokka is, I think, at 8.30 p.m. Now, if you are at the race day, because you're going to watch the Kiwi Waitak do the job in the slot race, the Quokka, then the TAB are putting on dinner for those who stay behind at the racetrack. So if you've had a bad day on the punt and you need a steak sandwich, you got one free, courtesy of the TAB. Uh, and if you're just looking for something to do and somewhere to watch the Quokka, equally, you are welcome to go. I've got a wedding, so I won't be at the Big E next Saturday. But uh, good luck to all those people that do head along and enjoy the, the race watching and screaming home white tack in the quokka. Is it a Zach Butcher um, steak sandwich? <laughs> I'm not sure whose meat it is. <laughs> are, you, yeah. are you going, Dan? 
Uh, unfortunately not. No, no. Okay. Uh, no, next weekend... Um, I'm going to be elsewhere. Okay, fair enough. Good luck to the uh, Lance O'Sullivan, Andrew Scott, uh, Wexford Stables team with that. And good luck to the TAB as well in the Quokka. That's a really, really cool race out of Perth, isn't it? It'll be about 8.30 at night, won't it? Yeah, Western. Yeah. Uh, what did happen on Alice, uh, at Alice yesterday? We probably should mention it, shouldn't we? Yeah. Look, I, I wasn't watching racing, so I didn't no. see it. Then I started to see some messages come through, and uh, you jump on social media, and obviously you got um, Sally that's calling for people's heads and who should be sacked and, and all of this sort of stuff, and Shaz is into it as well, and it's all happening. Uh, but from what I could see, a horse slipped near the crossing uh, after the winning post around that turn, and I actually messaged uh, Paul Wilcox, CEO, and just, just checked in to see uh, how he was and what had sort of happened. And, you know, true to P Dub for me, basically said, look, we'll have a plan by tomorrow. We'll communicate, um, you know, <clears throat> what we'll be doing going forward. And he said, just disappointing to let our standards slip as, as such. And, you know, that's I, a lot of respect for that from a CEO to basically say, look, we hold ourselves here and we've got down here. And then obviously we've lost a, a, a race meet. So, yeah, I don't know. I just think. Um, I mean, probably going to sound biased because it's me and I have a relationship with P-Dub and the Biggie and Ellerslie, but there's some big changes happening in racing, whether it be tracks, whether it be technology, whether it be systems, whether it be track side. And people are so quick to be like, oh, fuck, it's not perfect. This is bullshit. Someone's got to lose their job. Oh, I can't believe this. And it's just bizarre that we now are in this sort of world where something goes wrong or mistakes happen and people kind of want to voice this like ultra, this should be the solution over here. Like, yeah, let's fire someone and let them lose their job and then that'll fix it all. So then I think there just needs to be a little bit more uh, rational thinking going through racing as it goes through this big iteration and change into the new uh, being that it is becoming. And we should all expect some of these teething issues uh, because these are new innovations and things that we're not familiar with. So I kind of just expect some of this. Yeah, it's not great, and I'm not defending what's happened, but I think if we start seeing this uh, happen regularly, then of course people mm. should be alarmed and be in up in arms. But you know, realistically, um, things happen, and, and hopefully the, the club can rectify it and, and move on, and we can enjoy the sport of racing for each of the races that need to be there and uh, have, have our bets and do that with confidence and, and everybody can be safe and sound and leave there at the end of the day. Yeah, I think um, I, I am a little bit biased as well because like any time of these other tracks get abandoned, I just start blasting them and say they're the worst. <laughs> um, but I, I didn't quite feel the same about this one. But I think what a lot of the pent-up frustration comes from is not necessarily just this one that happened. I think there's been way too much of it in like the last six to eight months mm. in New Zealand. And I don't think it's... Um, you know, it's not Alzi's fault per se that, you know, this obviously, you know, that, that there's one person responsible and they should get all the blame and they should get everything. But I think because there's been so many this year, I think it's sort of like pent up and everyone's like, this is ridiculous now. Yeah. Um, and I do get that side of it as well. I get like, okay, cool. Well, we need to figure this out because it, it isn't really good enough for all these tracks to have so many abandonments. Um, so hopefully, yeah, I mean, just we learn from this and then we move forward and... It is, like, I get Alizee's a little bit different because it's a brand new track. They've just gone through this massive renovation. They're still learning and understanding the course and everything like that. And, um, yeah, hopefully we just, uh, we get to the point next year where all the tracks are in a better condition and we just have less abandonments next year than what we did this year. Yeah, I mean, obviously as well, if we want racing to be taken seriously in New Zealand from people watching from an international audience, then yeah, we, we can't have our, our best track in the country you know, not being able to race because of an issue and things like that. It'd be the same criticism that Ramwick would get or Flemington, etc. So yeah, very, very warranted, I guess, in terms of the, the frustration pent up from people who've been in the industry for a, for a long time. They're bringing horses up from Cambridge and Waikato and, and wherever and whatnot. So yeah, if these things happen, um, hopefully it doesn't continue to happen. I think as well, you know, a um, something that not a lot of people have to experience in their life is that most people get to go to their job and do their work and they actually make a lot of mistakes and they make a, mis a lot of mistakes in their life too. But it's not really seen by people because you're not actually that important. Now that sounds very rude and very brutal, mm. but then... We, when we see other people make mistakes and it, it can be public, we're like, fuck, we better shout from the rooftops. And 
it just uh, yeah, it just intrigues me, and I find it fascinating. But remember, at the end of the day, these are people working in these clubs, whether it be a marketing, pre- prepping the track, and things like that. And they go on see social media, and they they see this stuff as well. And you know, we'll get our turn tomorrow night. And you know, Fitzy, for instance, one of the bets won't go right, and fucking Sharon will be back into it. Oh, that was such a shit bet. I backed the winner. I had a dollar on it. How did you dickheads not know? And why do you keep hammering my mum? <laughs> Sorry, I said I got to I got to use another name, but. <laughs> But you know they, these roles are quite public and they're quite um, you know they're quite open to, to criticism and stuff. But at the end of the day, they're, they're people trying to find their way in their roles, preparing tracks and things like that too. So anyway, let's get back into the racing. Absolutely, well said. It was a very professional response from what I could see um, from the press release that you sent today. There's, there's, there was no um, there was no excuses. There was just a, this is what we're going to do about it. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of changes at Ellerslie, so these kind of teething issues could have been expected. But um, Auckland Racing Club aren't standing there with excuses. They're putting their hand up and they're going to go and deal with it. So good on you guys. Hopefully uh, you can turn it around. Like you say, hopefully every track can turn it around. One track that did turn it around on Saturday was Trentham. Oh. Tell you what, lads, I love Trentham. <laughs> hey, it's Trentham. That's my favourite place oh, in the world. Oh, God. Did we hit every bet that we made on Saturday or what? Oh, we, <laughs> should, we certainly did until about beer number eight. <laughs> Yeah, it went downhill after about beer number eight. No, it was probably vodka, uh, Red, vodka Bull. Red Bull number one at about 2.30 that turned into four vodka Red Bulls that turned into goodness knows what. It was a great afternoon. I had a great time. Leo Malloy was down at uh, HQ hosting us. It was a fantastic afternoon with you lads. I really enjoyed it. Uh, good on Sam Lawrence. Good on you, Sam, for coming along. She got $250 into the BGP Punters Club this yep. Friday. She came and found us. What a great day and a great time at Little HQ. Yeah, HQ, very good. We had the big screen. And I thought one of the coolest things for me, um, we were watching racing there for a few hours, and some of the kids that were having lunch with their parents, you know, were turning around sort of going, oh, what's going on here? And you could start to see that as they got interested, some of their parents were like, oh, okay, well, who do you like in this? Well, okay, go number eight, go number yep. eight. We're kind of shut it, kid, we're on number five. But anyway, <laughs> it's good that you're watching. But it just shows that, like, if racing's actually on in a pub, uh, people start to kind of, get a bit of in- intrigue of you know what's happening here and I think we were screaming a few home and whatnot so yeah it's uh it was it was it was good fun good fun day and we got the day off to a fly with uh, platinum attack mm. which is the uh the bit of the day for me so that started us off nicely well me off nicely anyway and then uh, we had a couple of show days at uh, where, were they, where were they racing I can't even oh, remember. Oh, Pookie. Pookie yeah, Ted had a couple of shorties, didn't he? Yeah. Well, Billy Lincoln was 3.30, and then there was that, is it Yaldi that was Yaldi? the old debut? Yeah, just pissed in, yep. didn't it? Yep. Yeah. 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 But, Dan, you said you had a look at it, and you were like, mate, it's, we've got to tear into this. Ted's all over it. I've had a look. I'm good to go. And we all just, we all. Was that the first starter? Yep. Yeah, 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 race yeah, and two. It, and, it, and it just led and just kicked away. Sorry, my mind's still a little bit dusty. I'm trying no, to piece no, no. it together. Was that the start of the day? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty early on, yeah. I think you boys went five for five or something for the first five races, right? It was yeah. unbelievable because then, then there was Navigator and, of course, Chevelle de Fondue that the goat has. The fondue. Is the <laughs> fondue. That was unbelievable. Oh, the chocolate or cheese. Pick your own fondue. Oh. Didn't mind it, did we? <laughs> Didn't mind it. Go the goat. Into apostrophe, into Nereus. Like, they just kept on coming for that afternoon. No wonder we got bloody... F- yeah, <laughs> it ended up quite, uh, it ended up well. I had a great day. <laughs> yeah. One yeah. to mention as well, Dan, last week, you had moved to Strike Mate, who came out and cleaned up the, um, I can't even remember the name of the race, but uh, beat Velocious, which I was really oh, upset yeah. about. But uh, that was good find. Yeah, was Man that, that Man of Two Sides? Man of Two Sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was an unbelievable run. Like, it, Velocious, I think, was very unlucky to not get a clear run and got not get a run through. Um, but yeah, moved to strike. I think um, you know they were right about that horse. That this this horse is a serious race horse, and obviously it's had a few issues. Like on that heavy track at Pukekohe where it ran second to Bellatrix Star. I'm basically just repeating everything that I said last week. But also just that um, you know a, a fibulation or whatever it had with the arrhythmia, um, and then it's just come back the start, and it looks like a real good horse. That that's a guineas horse. That's mm. that's the two thousand guineas right there. Yeah, that big long roomy straight. Really, um, you know, looked after that horse as well, and we got to see the uh, the true version of it. I do think that it may not have won had it have been raced around the town square as it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> the corners are a bit tight or something like yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know, with uh, it being at Trentham, it's yeah, really, really got all favours. So, Velocious was a tough watch, wasn't it? Yeah, I was really disappointed by that. I haven't watched the replay. I haven't bought myself to do Hang it. Up. But do you did, did we see whether or not? Like, I thought it got held up a little bit, but tough. Yeah, a little bit unlucky. Um, Still wouldn't have won? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. That that winner was very good. But, mm. 
Yeah, it was it was just an ugly watch if you're a punter. There was a bit of chat around it at the pub as well, not just us, you know, people coming in and even the uh, the bloke working at the bar says, Oh, it's the BGP guys, we're on Velocious tonough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he was sort of watching as well while serving a bit of food and yeah, let let a few people down. But look, it's had a very good run. I think that's just the reality of racing, right? It's such a, a good leveler where you can have maybe the best horse or the best horse um compared to the others in prior races, but you don't get the right run, especially in a race like that, and she all over. Yeah, no excuses. Like you guys said last week, actually, there was a couple of variables, one potentially being that that, that she come from, come to the end of her run, unfortunately, but uh, like you say, one hell of a season anyway. Still an absolutely outstanding horse, and somebody that's going absolutely outstanding still is Chad Ormsby, because out of stock, won the Manawa 2 Classic, just as sharp, uh, I think finished up third, Investigate was second, but, geez, that was a pretty easy watch if you're on out of stock at $16 which none of us were yeah I think people are getting pretty familiar with those colours aren't they yeah. we actually spoke about it before the race too we were sort of saying oh why have we not got something on this or this yeah. could do you think this could win and it, sure enough but yeah Chad Ormsby's certainly not out of stock he's got some bloody good stock <laughs> <laughs> and he'll be stocking up on beers and cash and bundles of cash and stacks and maybe bitcoin who knows you can have it fucking all the way maybe you chuck a bit of that in the, the uh, punters club yeah go on Chad good idea yeah, then. Put love a bloody club. cowboy head around and collect some more <laughs> off some of the uh, you know, others you're involved with and get some of the punters club yeah good Look, we watched that, and then we moved on to One Up and uh, Ramirez, which is probably where it started getting reasonably dicey. We, the, the Warriors were coming on. It was a bloody good time. But th- that's when the real Australian racing started, right? And unfortunately, uh, I can't – what went first? The TJ Smith went first, didn't it? And yeah, Imperatras, um, again, haven't watched the replay back, but I remember thinking at the night at that when watching it that she didn't quite get the run that she wanted, but whether, whether or not she'd, won, she'd win that race there anyway on a you know pretty soft track against some good horses. Yeah, I think I went. I've, I've been back and watched it a couple of times now, um, and she sort of got caught in a bit of a difficult spot where, like, she maybe should have gone a little bit sooner than she did, but then she sort of ended up in a pocket and tried to push out and didn't really get out get out until really late, and then still sort of found the line quite well. Did she run fourth or? I think she um, was fourth. Uh, and yeah, not sure. She wasn't too far off him, but looked to be finding the line at the end. So maybe if she got some clear air. She would have been running on okay, but like it was still like a absolutely mammoth effort and a mammoth season. Yeah, mm. and Chain of Lightning was massive, mm. a huge win, and it was a good win the start before. As well. I'm fairly sure it had won at start before, mm. but uh, yeah, it absolutely smacked me in the face this afternoon when I saw a Maddie uh, Maddie Punt IQ sent through an image that Imperatrice. I just absolutely gutted. I thought she was going to win every race under the sun next season, but uh, unfortunately retired for sounds like for very good reason, but. Um, it's a, that was a surprise to me, Luke. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame. You know, she's just really been representing um, New Zealand racing and uh, I guess for Tiaka, I'll fly their flag over there as they get more established in Australia and it's given us something to be excited about and the chat around her recently has been unreal. But obviously doing the right thing by the horse, they'll have a plan. She'll be a very, very valuable horse as well. So congratulations to, to everybody involved with her. Uh, I'm sure she probably, you know, may have had more wins. You know, I'm not. I'm not sure what the. I haven't read into you know what the decision is about, but uh, it'll be a smart one anyway. So I guess all of us would just be, you know, that are interested in racing, saying thank you to a horse like Imperatrice because it's not often you get to see a good one like that. And I've got some fond memories of watching her kick their heads in at the track. And unfortunately, we won't. Uh, so it's interesting it's, when they're when they're doing good, and you kind of just take it for granted. And then when they don't race anymore, you then have to start watching the replays, and it's kind of like, oh shit, I really did take that for granted. That's <laughs> the thing, isn't it? That you kind of like. I mean, we were talking a couple of weeks ago, Luke, when you were away. I was just like, I think that she's going to win everything, and you know, next year there's going to be the Everest and this and that. I don't know. You have the same feeling, Dan? Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to cancel my flights. I was already going to the Everest. I was, I was ready to go. I said, I had my Imperatrice colours on. I was going to scream out, there's only one Opie Boston. I thought it was all in the bag. I thought we'd won. Yeah. Uh, um, but that's game over. Absolutely. Well, well done to Tayako for um, you guys just pushed all the right buttons at the right times. Eh? Obviously, a couple of seasons ago, she had a few back issues. You guys always still said, you know, she's a this is a good horse. This is a really good horse. And when she was ready to go, you took her over there and won about six group ones and I think about three or four group ones in a row last season, which was unbelievable. It's been so good to watch. So good on you. And thanks very much for giving us the opportunity to see her. Does that mean Opie might be coming to an end too? Is that a too somber? Gee, well, hold on. There's been chat this <laughs> season that like, uh, you know, this is the horse that's keeping him going. Mm. 
Oh, mate, he'll find another one. Okay, they've, good. They've got, <laughs> Come on, on Opie. They've got this other one in Australia I'm on, um, at the moment that's absolutely flying called Sands Duke. Sands Duke. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right okay. So they're then going to start just putting them away. Is that the Everest bet? Oh, oh, well, hopefully Adrian Orr, the Reserve Bank governor, keeps interest rates up. Surely I hope he's got a bit of debt somewhere, you know, be wanting to pay off some of the <laughs> interest since <laughs> loans. Yeah, oh. give, it, give us another few year week, uh, few months of 8% interest rates. This is perfect, guys. Yeah, keep it coming. Dan, mate, I remember at about 10 o'clock or – no, it wasn't 10 o'clock, was it? At about 8 o'clock being absolutely gutted. We all were. Another will. Couldn't get the job done for you, mate. Yeah, thanks. I'd forgotten about that. Oh, um, sorry. <laughs> I thought we were going to move on straight past that and just no. continue living our lives. Yeah. I, yeah, I – with like 400 left, I was like, here we go. Like, this thing's going to kick away. But it just done too much work and – Look, that, that one Celestial Legend, that one, was really impressive. I went back and watched that a couple of times as well. Like, that didn't get out till late. And when it got out, it just put them away. That was a really impressive win. So it just wasn't good enough. Um, I don't know if the draw would have made the difference, to be honest. I think that Celestial Legend was really impressive um, and maybe just wasn't quite up to them. But it was a great bet, and it was a great ride all the way up to there. Um I wish maybe I didn't blast all uh, all my money thinking I'd cashed cashed in by the time we got to to that race. But you know what? These things happen. They do. Uh, I feel for you, mate, because you've had three decent multis that have boarded on five figure collects this season, and they've all missed by that last leg. Yeah, uh, probably a combined thirty five thousand, maybe. Would it be? Uh, yeah, close to yeah, yeah. <laughs> To really make yeah, yeah. Sorry. Jeez, we're going from some highs to lows here, aren't we? Oh, yeah. It's like it. fucking rainbows in this podcast. We're up and we're down. We're on the bloody, what's that ship? The pirate ship? The pirate oh, ship, yeah, yeah, Two yeah. seconds and a, what would it, uh, another will finish their fifth or something? Like, oh, but it was here, yeah, whatever, uh, two seconds, whatever, yeah. You do, mate, you do. Yeah. you get it tomorrow. Multi up um, ZB's triple meat. <laughs> <laughs> or something else you'll get paid. Uh, Ted texts me the next day. He reckoned that it was the draw that did it. Worked too hard at the start and worked hard at the end. But that was a good bet from Ted, honestly. I'm sure that everybody that followed him in from that futures punt a few weeks back uh, had a good time at least watching the last race that it won comfortably and then having a crack at it on Saturday. Um, so, yeah, unfortunate, Dan. But we'll, we'll move on to the next one. Keep your comments coming in, everybody. Let us know what your best bet is for this weekend. We're about to get to Autucky. We've got the Hawks Bay Cup. We've got the City of Napier Sprint, which is strange that it's in Autucky, but that's okay. It happens, you know. And then we've got the Southern Alps Challenge as well. Um, just to round out Saturday, the Waz were absolutely unbelievable. We can't wait to see you guys on Saturday. Hopefully Jazz Tavanga didn't get too offended by our message uh, on Saturday night, but uh, it was just something about Latrell Mitchell's elbow. Okay, good. How what good a- to see that fullback back in action too. Uh, who? CNK. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. awesome, eh? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Not I thought you meant trus- Latrell, and I was thinking, no, what no. a dick he is. <laughs> Not good for my tricycle a bit, though, but he set a couple up. We have to go. I'll double down this week. Absolutely. We'll get some punts on. It's going to be a great afternoon. Righto, the blessed bet this week before we get into the races. I think it's already been announced, but let's just make sure everybody knows what's going on and what they need to get their money on if they're not already in the punters club. Can I just say blessed bet from last week? Shit. Is That So really let us down. We had oh. Rudyard that won the race, just needed it top four with Is That So. And yeah, the I thought... We had a, a scratching in there. It started shortening up. I thought this is just gonna. This day is just getting unreal. Yeah. At yeah. this stage, out to five dollars fifty. Rudyard model of consistency is that so? Nah, just uh, just couldn't do it for us. Yeah, Rudyard was very good though. Dan, what's the bliss bet, mate? Bliss bet. We're going to Cambridge tomorrow. Race three, number two, Lincoln's Cove, and we've gone with the win insurance um, for top three. So. What that means is we're getting it boosted to $2.80 if it wins. Oh, hang on. $3.20 boosted. Uh, $3.20 boosted if it wins. Um, if it runs second or third, you get your money back. So we've gone for a bit of uh, safety option there. I actually think this horse is an outright winner. And when I sent it at $5, I whacked it. And then I thought, hang on. Um, there was another horse in this race called Bobby Boy, which uh, was my best bet two weeks ago. And then I sort of we jumped on it last week and it won, right, yep. won last week. It ran second the week before, but then it got scratched. And then I, and then Lincoln's Cove didn't move. It stayed at $5. And I thought, hang on, something's going on here. But we've got like a pretty nice uh, filly from uh, the uh, uh, Dalgetty barn. 
which is paying two dollars, which is quite short. But I think the tab have got the market wrong here, because um, because of the barrier draws and the way that this place, uh, this this track runs. I think Lincoln Cove is going to lead, maybe trail if it needs to, and I think that this horse has a chance to just put them away, and I think it's going to win. And if it, and I just can't see how it doesn't run top three to get your money back. Oh. This will kick it off. This will be uh, ZB's second win of the night as well. Is he on it? Zach Butch is driving you. Oh, what a result. <laughs> oh, that's, a, that's fantastic. What's, what's right. the chant going to be? Um, show us your meat, ZB. Or something, <laughs> is it? 110 of the PGP community. Yeah. Show us your meat, ZB. <laughs> Get it out there. <laughs> All right. Hey, mate. Well, you've done a lot of form there, Dan. I hope you've done some form for the uh, for the gallops as well. If you did want a little bit of extra co- uh, confidence on that bet as well, that was going to be the scan man's best bet for this weekend. He's had to give us another one because Dan Rack had already got it in as his best bet. But the scan man liked it. Fitzy and Matty Markham like it as well. They've obviously already had a crack on it. So, gee whiz, take it while you can because that sounds like a bloody good bet. Right, let's get to Otaki on Saturday. Sorry, just on that blessed bet real quick. So when um, – I didn't say anything to Fitzy or Markham because, I was, well, as I was saying to you, like they, they, they don't need me messaging them, telling them what they should be betting on. So yep. I didn't mention anything about it. Then the blessed bet got put up and Fitzy messaged the group straight away and goes – Who's who, who's done that blessed bet? What's going on there? We were just about to whack 15k each way on this thing, yeah. And uh, so yeah, I think everyone's quite keen. I think there's uh, yeah, so plenty of energy around today. Time Fired to, up, right? Time right. To finish it off. The Hawks Bay Cup. It is going to be pissing down, Luke. Brilliant. <laughs> this is your good. neck of the woods, mate. You're just going to have to bring this home. Oh, for sure. Right. This Hawks Bay Cup. It looks nice. It was first run in 1903. They would run from. <laughs> they would run from Hastings to Napier. Yeah, and nick a beer and then go all the way back. Oh, that was and yeah, they'd nick yeah, it out of a that. cup. That's what's called the it's horseback not, cup. It's not that far, is it? Hastings to Napier, really? It's, ah, look, it's it's, it's by um, on horseback without a saddle. It is. Oh, it's but by car these days, not brutal. so not so bad. <laughs> anyway, this year we've got an outstanding running of it, but they're down there at Ortucky. That's race number six. We had the good horse nominated with no jockey. That was the dead giveaway. Snazzy Tavi wouldn't be going around, which is a big shame. Probably could see the rain that was coming. Uh, are we going to be on a soft or a heavy track? Who well, knows? It, it says that it's a good track right now, but it's supposed to be raining for the next three days. So oh, TAB don't really update, do they, um, until the morning? Well, yeah. one that I didn't mind in here is Elegant Lady. And we'll speak about this a little bit later on, if you know what I'm saying. But I actually tipped this last start to finish off a multi you did. with nu- Nucleosa. We just needed it to run top four. It was just starting to get into its work up the rail. And then it bumped into a horse called Ears Back, which I don't know what happened to Ears Back. It just sort of stopped. And then the the rider of Elegant Lady basically sort of had to stop riding it. And it only finished 10th. He basically uh, didn't even ride it out. It was about six lengths off them. So it looked horrific on paper, but it really was just coming into it. Now, this horse actually likes a bit further ground and has proven over a bit further ground and is uh, pretty good on an off track as well. So... We get Craig Grills on board, uh, but by no means is this a you know a, a home run as such. There's some pretty good horses in there. I think everyone saw Testify Me last start, which mm. was very, very good, but definitely mixes its form, but has won 25% of its starts, which is pretty bloody good. And then Bill Thurlow, he knows how to train a stayer. Bongi Ahu in there as well, $5.50 into $4.80. This horse will not be phased by any wet weather, but... I'm going to go with Elegant Lady and see if that can get me paid. Dan, you like something, mate? Well, did you see Cheval de Fondue in there? <laughs> yes. <laughs> go again, yes, back it absolutely. up. Absolutely. Uh, $9. Yeah, it's had a win on a heavy track as well. Um, I don't know what the goat's thinking, but maybe give us the word, mate, if you then this thing's going to blast through the middle again because well, that was impressive last start. Um, I like one in this and one only. Uh, testify me. I don't know if you remember, Ted had it his best bet back at mm. Tarapa on a heavy track. Yeah. And I don't know if, you, if that was impressive. It came from last and just blasted them on a heavy track. And so my assumption is that we're going to be on a heavy track at Otaki. And that's why I thought, testify me. Yes, please. Um, but I am going to do a Quinella with Elegant Lady and testify me. I think they're the two on a heavy track. Nice. You're right about testifying me. I remember that. It came from absolutely nowhere. It's been going well, but like you say, Luke, mixing its form a little bit 
Um, I wondered whether a horse like Titled, who I think was a three-year-old and ran reasonably well in, uh, well, was a three-year-old at some point, but uh, ran, ran reasonably well in some of those staying races as a three-year-old, it hardly misses top three, um, to be honest. It's on its home track. It's one on a heavy um, and another top four on a heavy. I just wondered whether that might be a little bit of value, but I did land on Elegant Lady as well. They've bought it back from up uh, from down south, so perhaps they've bought it up for for a reason. Uh, who knows? There's another one on there, Prince Albie, who goes pretty well too. But uh, yeah, I found this race pretty difficult. But I'll probably just have a crack at Elegant Lady. I know you like it, Luke, and it sounds like you do too, Dan. So uh, why not? Good luck if you're having a crack into the uh, the Hawks Bay Cup running on Saturday from Napier to Hastings and back. Be a good time. Righto, race seven, the City of Napier Sprint. Uh, 4.34 p.m. We're going to be 26 minutes away from kickoff at the Waz. We would have been well fed and watered, um, and we'll be looking for a winner in this uh, sprint race in the mud. Well, shit. If in doubt, get out. Get outside, because I will not be tipping anyone the winner of this race inside the Warriors Stacey Jones Lounge box on Saturday, because this is an absolute nightmare, especially if we have to factor in a heavy track by the time we get there. I'm really interested to see what scratchings. This is where... It draws you in as a punter with the no deductions. We're like, oh, a couple of these could come out. Oh, my God. So I went through today and had a few bets on some roughies. Did you? I was just sicko. You know, just ridiculous, (laughs) ridiculous thinking. But uh, a horse that doesn't mind a a wet track is a horse called Arish Arish, which I do have a fair bit of time for. Now, this horse is very hard to follow. It's only actually won four races from 18. Uh, But at one stage, it looked like it was really going to go on with it. But... Sort of hasn't, but last uh, start it wasn't too bad. And on a soft track, it is placed uh, eight times from nine. Mm. Yeah, and nine starts. And uh, Widamu Will, Will, Pin, uh, Billy the Kid, is riding very well and wouldn't be surprised to see them uh, take this out. But even a horse like Bold Bell, first up, it performs. It won't mind the off track as well. I think it's a little bit underrated out of a very, very good mere and gossiping uh, that is Bold Bell's mum so who knows I think it'll be let's let's see what this track looks like come Saturday uh, but that's the way I was going to go the 7 or the 8 Dan didn't Bradman clean us up on the weekend yeah it was yes. a really impressive win mm. um, as well but uh, that's a lot of weight now 59 kilos it was carrying 53 oh. uh, beat Province and our Echo that just reminds me Province was the Hundred dollar winner. Oh, was it for okay. last week? Right. Oh, that was the best. Okay. Oh, so Province has been rolled by Bradman and the community winner of the hundred dollar best bid. I think they were on at six bucks as well. Has been rolled bold and. I've got to admit, I don't oh. remember that race, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, neither do I. But I, I can guarantee if I looked at my TFP receipts, I had a lot on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was. Um, I think I was on Lantern Way or something like that. No, nah, I think that was um, we were having a crack at. <laughs> Uh, you got a couple at this time of the day. You had Ducasse in Australia and something else. Um, <laughs> Ducasse was quite early. That, yeah, I had a crack oh. Ducasse. that was about four o'clock. <laughs> oh, yeah, was no, early. this is Tavitex race. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, that was gross. <laughs> oh, you telling me, mate? <laughs> you telling me? Oh well, uh, Dan, do you like anything in this race, mate? Um, I'm I I quite I, I kind of like uh, I'm wonderful tonight here. Um, at four dollars fifty, Massa up. I went back and had a look at its runs on soft tracks, and I thought they were pretty good. So it's untried on a heavy track, which I think we're still going to find. But this is a big step back in grade from who it's been racing. Mm. Um, and I think that it gets to carry the 55 and a half, which isn't super heavy. The other one, and this is this is probably going to do a few people's heads in. Um, G-string. No, I was going to say Lincoln's Cruise. <laughs> oh. just, just a little each way go. <laughs> Because I thought that it ran on quite well last start, um, and that was uh, on a soft seven as well. And I was, it was it's, you're getting a price for it to find out. So I think just the thirty ones and six dollars. I reckon it'll drift a bit more as well, depending on who gets scratched here. Lisa Snakes and Ladders knows what she's doing with the horse, and I just, I mean, this thing's a psychopath. Oh, this is an absolute <laughs> psychopath of a horse. But if you get it on its day, it can just put him away. So 
Like I'll, I'll just have a little gold coin each way and, and see if it comes in. Is that the thing that won the Pegasus at Rickerton earlier in the season, Lincoln, Lincoln's Cruise? Yes. Was that, Is yeah, it? And it was a really impressive <laughs> it win as well. It came out of nowhere, eh? It was, yeah. Everyone was on the Tony Park horse. And then it just yeah. sweats up and pulls its head <laughs> off and tries to bite other horses. It's crazy. What about We Will Rock? You oh. mentioned that on its first up. I think, Dan, you did. And its second up record, um, it's placed three out of three. Uh, it goes good on a heavy track. Ooh. Have you missed it? I, I would... missed that. Oh, that's ooh, hello. You reckon that's all right? I go, man, we right. will have a rock on. Let's have um, a cr- <laughs> <laughs> you rock hard if this thing wins. Oh goodness me, that's gold. Okay, all right. Well, I like we will we will rock. Uh, who who did you like again, Luke? <laughs> Arisha, all right. Yeah, I'm gonna go Arisha. Arisha, stick with. All right, let's get down south because uh, on Saturday afternoon we've got one more race. Keep your comments coming in. We'll get to the best bets after this. We're gonna need a little bit of help on Saturday. It's gonna be bloody tough times hunting in the wet, but uh, I think Rickerton's going to cop some weather as well. But this is pretty cool, lads. This is the Tab Southern Alps Challenge. I think it's the first South Island race that we've previewed outside of the New Zealand Cup Carnival, of course. But this is to win $350,000, and I believe it's only for the South Island trainers, which is uh, really cool. I could have my facts wrong on that, but um, that's amazing. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Luke, you like Rickerton. Yeah, I don't mind it. I'll let Dan go first. I'm just going to find something about uh, a runner and then uh, come to me. Good. Um, well, I think we've got one in here, Mystic Park. Was that the best bet or was that your best bet or something? A Luke's couple best of weeks bet ago? a couple of weeks ago and he and, said it was going to this. Yeah, and it yeah. won really impressively. Um, I think the, the weight scale here works out really well for it and I think that that one's a really good chance. Um, but pretty short at $2.40. So I did think um, I was looking around for anything that ran on a wet track. And to be fair, I kind of struggled to find anything that went well on a heavy track. But I thought one that was, and this is drawn really poorly, and this is this is way, this is from the top ropes. Um, I've had a couple <laughs> the of these tonight. Um, the buffer. It's drawn 20, uh, but it's had 17 starts on a heavy track for two wins, five seconds. Holy heck, it has. Two thirds and two fourths. So 11 out of 17 in the top four. So you're getting $7.50 top three. I think top four, you're getting $5.50. I just think I, I'd throw like a 10 bucks uh, to win, 10 bucks top four, and and just watch that and see. Matty Cameron's on. Uh, Kenny Ray from up north. He knows how to uh, he knows how to win a race yep. at uh, Rickerton. Yep. Yeah, I like their horses actually. I always have a crack when they're up when they're racing up at Ruakaka, and he's had a few running around at um, Rickerton and Wingatui this year that have won. Mm-hmm. Uh, Magneto, I think, might be one of them. Luke, what's what's happened, mate? Oh, I was just trying to figure out what actually happened to Ears back last start because it just stopped with it. It was leading. Oh, it just yeah. stopped. Yeah, it's in this race, and oh, yeah, look, it's 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 not half a bad horse, but it is just concerning of just how quickly it stopped. And I was just trying to find in the stewards' report if maybe there was something. Uh, wrong as such, but lines up again. But barrier thirteen, it'll be just one inside Mystic Park, which is now two dollars forty. And this horse was two dollars eighty boosted going into this race. You can still get two dollars seventy. I think that's pretty good money for a horse that has just been absolutely beating them up like Jean Claude Van Damme. So if you do want to take that, make sure you take the boosted price further down the page. So you're getting something a little bit extra. But of course, this track is going to be the tricky thing. Uh, to play around. A horse like Matt Scott's in there again as well, who the goat liked. Now, maybe, um, yeah, I mean, that, that wouldn't be without its chance. The one that I don't mind and think will cop a bit of an off track as well is John Ol Rocco. Now, this horse was pretty good last start uh, up the inner in the same race as Mystic Park, if you're going to go back and watch that. But interestingly, this horse has had eight starts at Rickarton, and it has run top four in all of those eight starts. That's pretty bloody impressive. So from 13 starts, it's had four wins, three seconds, two thirds, and two fourths, which is pretty good going. So you can get $7.50 to win uh, right through to $2.40 top four. I think that's a great each-way bet in this race should Mystic Park not handle the track and get rolled. That's good money, mate. I see down the bottom that Matty Markham somehow has had time to do form for Rickerton because he's got a tip in there and he's he's tipping out Mystic Park. Shouldn't he be just worried about Friday night? I think the TAB might be paying him too much. It's unbelievable. Come on, Matty Markham. Yeah, he's got Mystic Park and he's got John Rocco, and so does Matt Cross, who I normally go for. Uh, I follow down there at Rickerton. But, uh, yeah, I, I had a look and thought Matt Scott might be one as well. 
There's a crazy runner in there, Lady Talina, who ran third in the te- Telegraph, had a crack at Ortaki, the group one there, and the Herbie Dyke, ran absolutely nowhere. But, you know, to take a, to, to run third in the Telegraph sprint and take a horse up to run in those kind of races, they must have uh, some sort of opinion on it. And Warren Kennedy's down there riding on it. Never won on a heavy, but run in the top four, what's that, eight times out of 12. So it shouldn't mind it too much. So maybe... If it has a good day, it might be worth it, eleven and three dollars fifty. But uh, yeah, everyone seems to be liking Mystic Park, and it's boosted. So why not have a crack at that? Yeah, bring it on! Great race. Um, I'm not sure if you guys realise we will get to the best bets, but those three that we've mentioned are all between four and five o'clock. Luke's just watching YouTube, so it's, <laughs> he's sort of zoned out. But the big Australian races, which we'll quickly have a chat about after the best bets, uh, sorry, <clears throat> after the best bets from the community, are all between four and five thirty as well. So. I won't be leaving the Stacey Jones Lounge to go down to my seat at the Warriors. I'll just be up there watching racing and enjoying yeah. the game from up there. It's going to be great. Do we pay f- um, a lot of money to have that screen in the to be able to watch it? Nah. Okay. Should we have? Uh, I don't know. But so we got oh, they were charging <laughs> they were charging us to rent a TV the same amount as it is to buy a TV. <laughs> I went online and was like, this is incorrect. I well, could buy bond one from bond. Harvey Norman for the same price as you want us to borrow one for a for a day. <laughs> a we day, can literally, a we day. can literally buy one from the warehouse, yeah. and then put it back in the box at the end of the night and take it back take, to the warehouse the next day. I thought that was ridiculous, but should we go for it? Oh, I don't know, mate. Look, we're that far in a fucking hole at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's another fucking Samsung thirty two inch? I mean, look, it's not the Warriors; it's their contractor that works at Mount Smart Stadium, and they do all the events and things like that. But Christ, it's just how, about, how about a Fitzy and uh, Markham yeah. fucking four X the the Punters Club tomorrow? We just like buy this. a TV. Get it? Are you there? Book <laughs> the TV. Book the TV. <laughs> Zach Butch has just driven through. Hey. Show us your meat. And show me the TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, we're fired up. I'm getting pretty excited. Hey, can we have another beer? This is a good time. <laughs> right, let's get to the community. Adam, who have we got, mate? Adam Pompey. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, thanks, mate. Um, <laughs> the, I think the best one at the start here is from Rhino saying, uh, what's the odds on Rackman going to the toilet more than three times the show? No live stream, so it's fine. Oh, he God, Rhino it, knows. He had it at thirty. you know, it's quite short. <laughs> I, um, I was just thinking, should I shoot off to go to the bathroom while you're reading out the comments? Uh, I, don't, I don't think that's the thing, Rick, man. Otherwise, you know, those odds will get... I'll move a bit. We've got um, Wayne's going for Otaki Race 2 for uh, Star Shadow at $2.30. Um, Lee is all in for Quintessa. We've got Buddy here who is also on... Uh, who's on Mystic Park Race 8 at Rickerton. Um, we have as we get further down here, we got Chris who is keen on Coney Island, uh, Otaki Race One. Uh, man, these it's one of these things that I feel like when you start reading things and people are actually there, they just all of a sudden start firing in. So there's quite a they just kind of took it in here. We've got a uh, uh, Scott's on uh, Otaki Race Three, uh, Perfect oh, Sister. Yeah. It just, perfect Sister, yeah, Perfect, perfect Sister. It's, yeah, it's joined as one word and oh. really threw me off there. <laughs> the brain just wouldn't work at all. That's uh, quite a struggle. And then if we get down the bottom here, we have uh, Matt Hill, uh, oh, yeah, I mean, Randwick, yeah. uh, Race 8 via Sestina. And then um, Parata at the bottom here has Race 8 at the Night of Champions. Mickey Shan at $3 for top three. See you boys there. Lovely. That's good. Eh? Is Mickey Shan in one of our bets or no? No, that's something no. else starting with him. No, no, that's not. Right, okay. Via Sestina was uh, Matty Puntaiq's best a couple of weeks ago. Correct, yep. Good on you. Matt Hill does the form everywhere, doesn't he? Loves it. Loved he it on the line. It. Just must, and there's no racing at Flemington this week, so he's um, he's doing the form at Randwick. Good on you, Matty Hill. See you at an event at some point soon. Yeah. Um, I see you're reviewing some videos there, Luke, so that's good. Yeah, yeah I'm just trying it. to find another winner. Because, uh, actually, I've got one that I... Try to figure this race out. Now, it's the Cavallo Farms and Chris Rutten Bloodstock Handicap. Now, Chris Rutten, very, very good bloodstock agent, can find a horse like Vespa, for instance, Wolverine. Anyway, very, very good at what he does. Now, he's got a runner in this race. It's race number five at Otaki, and it's Pride of Aspen, I believe. Yes. Yes. Now, this horse, uh, on and off track and second up, has performed before Otaki. For uh, Jono Stable, I think they'll have this horse ready to roll, but it's got to be Contribute. But there's also a horse in here that is really good to follow on a heavy track, and it just puts them away. It's won 9 from 44, 
Uh, but get this, it's had 23 of its starts, of its 44 starts on a heavy track. Like, that is... Loves it. Sick. Just loves it. Just a bit... Yeah, over 50% of its starts, and it's won six of those, run <laughs> second six times, and third three times as well. So that's over 75% strike rate so in top three. 22, and it's been 13 times in the top three. Yeah, uh, 19, uh, sorry, 23. 15, 15 times. 15 yep. times out of the yep. 23, yeah. Right. So Have you named the horse? It's called Semper Magico. Now, Jessica Allen rides three kilos off the back. Now, if this ends up with a sloppy old go uh, on Saturday, I'm going to be having something on at nines and threes, probably even top four. I wouldn't be surprised if something gets scratched out of here, but $2.20 top four. Now, on a good track, it's had 13 starts and never won a race. <laughs> but I tell you, last start... It was sent around at Hastings on a good track and was nine lengths off them. So you forgive that. Then goes to the trials, win the trials. Only got three horses in there, but beats them up by two lengths and a length. Uh, Heavy track on Saturday. That'll be the key. Anyway, as we get into this winter racing and then the rain starts to come, do not forget this horse. Let's uh, let's hope it's just like last Saturday and it's a sloppy old go. Mm. Yeah, I see rusty lanes in there too, so that's, you know, (laughs) who knows what's going to (laughs) happen. Oh, goodness, what a race that is. I reckon Ted will be back and contribute in that day, surely. That was his best bet from a few weeks ago, and it was very unlucky. But Semper Magico, gee whiz, you're 100% right. Well found. Dan, did you like anything else in New Zealand before we get to Australia? I did. Um, I had a couple more that I liked, um, and I'll just try and be as quick as I can just to get through these. Uh, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I looked at everything and I thought, we're going to be on a heavy track, so I'm just going to do form for a heavy track. And if it's not heavy, then don't bet on them. Um, but Rickett in race two, a horse called On Song, had its third start last start. So it ran sixth and sixth, and then it won impressively last start. It went down south on a heavy track. It lit up, and it won quite impressively over 1,200. And I think it's a good each way bet at $9 and $3. I think if we get a wet track or an off track, I could see this horse running along in front at Rickerton and getting along early in race two as well, where I think the inside will maybe be a little bit favorable. Then later in the day when you get a little bit wider and then maybe coming a little bit uh, down the outside of the track on this heavy track, Rickerton race six, Mazakatu. I liked its run last start on the same track behind two horses that's going up against again today, which is Contemplation and uh, uh, Nick Nikai. Um, when it was back and it looked like it was running on okay, um, but when I went back and I had a look, it run uh, on a heavy track in uh, September last year, and it actually looked like it really got through the ground well on a on a heavy or rough track. And so I think this horse comes in a Barry Four. I really think it's a really good each way play at sixteen dollars and four dollars eighty. Nice mate. Okay. Uh, there's a meeting at Tarapa on Sunday, and I was going to make um, Same Wa my best bet out of that because Dan's loved it, and the runs it's had the last couple of times have been outstanding. But then I saw a horse called Casino Princess in there as well. I think it's Tarapa race six. And just now I'm thinking about it. I probably should have made the Quinella my best bet because I think that might be a good good crack on uh, Sunday, Tarapa race six, Casino Princess and Same Wa. They've both been finishing very well at races in uh, at Ellerslie and uh, Pukekohe. I don't think I'll be feeling like a punt on Sunday, though, eh? so better get a bit on now. Uh, you might be thousands <laughs> up after you bloody barbecue your meat from the butchers not, on Friday. Not yeah. if Amelia's Jules racing on Saturday night again, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot Is that going to the quokka? I don't know. I, I hope not. not. <laughs> I hope not. I was going to the paddock. I'm glad you guys didn't let me put it in there. That was money. yuck. That was awful. Anywho, no, right on. did. Oh, no, it was my money. And... Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I'm really... I'd forgotten, that's right. I'm really that's sorry. How much do I owe? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's, it's fine, mate. Poor old Amelia. Was it more jewel. than what you lost, Matt? Eh? I don't know. I think it's the same. Okay. Fuck. Oh. That was just silly. Anyway. She- Sheffield Sparky run fourth. We sent uh, <laughs> Cam, Rogers a, Cam Rogers a video drunk in it. Some sort of hour asking him to review that video and see if we can get paid out. There was a, it was a uh, dead, Sorry, he- it was a dead heat for third, wasn't it? And oh, we was thought Sheffield Sparky run three to run fourth. I we think- got onto the TAB and said, "What the hell's going on?" Next year at the BGP mid-season Christmas party, we need to um, make sure there's some water provided, eh? You, you boys are just out of hand. I thought you were going to say, maybe we should hand our phones in at the start of the night. We we get them back at the end. A wallet's phones, that's a good idea, actually. Uh, keys? Yeah, yeah, keys yeah. is a good idea. Yeah, You've right lost your keys night. and everything, mate. Uh, We've all had an absolute shocker. Everybody out there that's listening knows exactly what we're talking about. It was one of those great days out. Righto, we don't have too much more time. Let's just quickly get through... 
Australia. Race six, the Australian Oaks. Orchestral's in this paying a dollar sixty. And Quintessa's in it paying fourteen dollars as well, which you probably wouldn't want to miss out on another top four effort from Quintessa because what a horse. But uh, I I don't know enough about this race, so I'm gonna hand it to you fellas. I thought Orchestral dollar sixty is too short to bet on, but geez, hope she wins. Yeah, I quite like uh, the look of Orchestral uh, to win and Quintessa top four. Um, well, actually, you've got both Orchestral and Quintessa. Mm. No, so I'm sorry. I thought I'd just seen one there, but I seen it wrong. Um, but there's Orchestral <laughs> top two and Quintessa top four, which is $2.50, which I think is pretty good value. It's been a bit of that this week, isn't it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> I've been all over the shop. Um, I've actually been looking um, for the margin bet again here oh, like yeah. i think now she's stepping up to 2400 i'm looking for plus two or plus three links and i'm just gonna whack that just see uh, cam another video mate and see if you can yeah, get it up. If, <laughs> oh well yeah well hopefully he's he should be there tomorrow night so maybe i'll chat with him but yeah we'll oh God, we'll see if he's still talking to me after <laughs> <laughs> some of the content that was sent his way but um yeah uh yeah like i think i'll pl- probably play around uh play around some of the, the, the power plays there. But I, I, I love Orchestra, and I can't s- wait to see her just smash them up. And if I've got a decent amount of my account, I might just whack it all on here. Yeah, I fired up, and I love it. Yeah, look, hopefully the Kiwis can Quinella it. That would be very, very special. Quintessa, we spoke about her at some length a number of podcasts ago and said we felt like she is a very good horse, and, and we know that she is. She's gone over to Australia, and she has performed over there as well very consistently just in behind some of those very good horses. So, look, I don't think they can beat Orchestral based on how well she has been going. But again, you just never know. Uh, but she just looks like an out-and-out racehorse. And J-Mac on, very, very good. J-Mac versus Opie, wouldn't we love to see it? Be shades of Conqueror versus Probabil and the Krakamillion three-year-old in 2000. I can't remember the year, but it was <laughs> so horny. Who's J-Mac on? Uh, Orchestral, Opie, Quintessa. How good. Yeah. That's Go outstanding. Love Go that. Kiwis. Put six lengths on the rest of them. Righto. Uh, race seven, Marajan, the Auckland Cup winner, is in that as well, which is the Sydney Cup. I don't suppose you guys have a winner in this, do you? Yeah, actually, I'm uh, really keen on one here over 3,200 metres. I've uh, been waiting for it to get up over ground. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but in all honesty, really liked the win of this horse. Carlapore last start. It was very good over 2,400 metres. And surprised a few of them, including myself, at $31. Didn't manage to get on, but very familiar colours. And, yeah, I, uh, I'm i just going to have something on that for a bit of interest because, look, these these become guessing races to a degree. Uh, but hopefully the Kiwi can get the job done as well and um, give us something to cheer home. That'll be good. Good luck to the stable out there. Race 8, Queen Elizabeth Stakes, Group 1. Looks like one hell of a race. Mr. Brightside in there. Everybody's uh, loving that horse. Pride of Jenny, $4. Via Sestina, one of the lads in the chat, had that as its best bet. But just to round out the Kiwis, uh, the Grain Shaker Vodka, which I've never heard of. Sounds pretty good. Can have a few more of those on Saturday. The Queen of the Turf, Group 1. I don't think we expected Campionessa to be running in this race, did we? Over 1,600 metres, dropping mm-hmm. back in distance. But... At $16, shit, you wouldn't put it past her. She just loves a race. Yeah, this is a big step up in grade. Um, they did say that they were going here, and um, I did have a oh. futures bet on her, and uh, she was paying less then than what she's paying now, <laughs> so how good. Um, but I think that um, in this race, look, I, I love Quint, uh, Campionessa. I think she's just a, such a strong horse. Mm. But when I look at this field, I go, a tissue has been racing some very, very quality animals. Uh, Last start went down to Cascadian and Pride of Jenny. Um, You know, uh, just the $4.80 seems like pretty good good odds for a tissue. And I think I'll probably play around a tissue with a Cornella with Campionessa as well. Um, Yeah, that'll probably be my play for this one. Yeah, I just don't know these uh, these horses well enough to be confidently tipping something out, but... I'm going to be interested to see how do the Macarena down the bottom of the book goes. I uh, didn't mind this horse's last couple of starts. It's only had seven and has won a couple in third, uh, sorry, second three times. So $14 and $4, I think, 
That'll be 6.35. The Warriors will be, might be about, oh no, they will be, he will deep into the second half. We'll be 40 points ahead. <laughs> cleaning we'll flying. up. flying. We'll be cleaning up on the punt. Just like, righto, let's we'll just do the Macarena. <laughs> this is easy. I've se- I seen that, uh, the Macarena on one of like the racing.com's like sectional standouts or something. And apparently it was, like I watched the video, not apparently, I watched the video. It was so unlucky and it got out late and flashed. And so, yep. yeah, that they were saying, watch out for this thing next time. So 14 and 4.20, hello. Gee, that's good money. Right, oh, Campion S is at $3.30 for the top four as well. You're doing the macarena. That's good. There it is. Oh, bloody hell. Multi-talented. Um, <laughs> that's... <laughs> I don't know about that. Multi-something. <laughs> right, oh, let's get to the best bet. Oh, sorry, the best bets. Sure, we're not to, even at best bets. To round out this yeah, show, we've had stuff. a good hour. And, no, we've, we're under an hour because we started at 7.03 and then Fitzy held us up with his um, interludes at Sky City Casino. <laughs> <nudes>. so, so, <laughs> <laughs> Making it in the bathroom again. <laughs> Oh, gee whiz. Right, I'll get us kicked off and then we'll work out what the order's going to be from yep. there, shall we? Ted has got one for us at Ortucky. Race 8, the ugly sister, $5.50. She won her maiden race easily at Matamata on a heavy track over 1,400 metres in a time right in line with both the two rating 65 races that day. Looking at the weather forecast, there is a strong likelihood of a wet track at Ortucky and she can win again. When I sent that through today, Luke, you were pretty happy with that, mate. I had a bet on that. that oh, was, was it you that you that yeah, liked I, it? I liked it too, yeah. Okay, good. I think well, we all liked it. Jeez, mm. right. Well, yeah, this yeah. happened last weekend and it won, so let's get yeah. on. Oh, right how on. good. Yeah, just keep punting it. Uh, the Goat's Best Bet, Rick and Race 5 in Vegas, $7 and $2.50. Unlucky last start behind Matt Scott. Uh, that was over 1,800. Steps back up to the 2,000 metres where it's been running great races, including a good second to the underbelly, which is a good horse. This horse is knocking on the door for a win. Let's go. Well, well, well. Punt IQ. Ramwick race number four, a $17 best bet. It's now into $14, but this horse is called Fly Flying. You will be flying high when this one pisses in. She's still a maiden taking on the elite two-year-old filly class here, but plenty of merit in what she has produced and should be a single-figure quote, in my opinion. That means we're getting overs and there is value up your bloody units. Lady of Camelot looks hard to beat, so a Quinella or 25% win, 75% place might be the way to go. Punt IQ having an outstanding season across the ditch. Very strategic, Matty. Dan, your best mate? Yeah, mate. I've got the BGP bless bet this week. Uh, Cambridge race three, number two, Lincoln Cove. I think it went down very narrowly last start to a pretty good horse in Bobby Boy. Um, I think this horse has got a bit of ability We've got all the meat with Zach Butcher on board. Um, and I've gone with the wind insurance as well. So if it comes second or third, we'll get our money back. Um, but you're blessed and it's paying $3.20. That's uh, Cambridge Race 3, number 2, Lincoln's Cove. Nice. The scam man likes that as well. But he's had to find another one because Dan Rack got on there first. He's gone Saturday, Winton Harness, Race 5, Betters Anvil, $2.40. Debut effort was very good last Sunday, making good ground late. Should be better for that run and can make his presence felt. Good on your scam, man. Dan, do you want to do Fitzy and then we're getting into Luke's? Yeah. Um, yeah Fitzy's gone to Saturday, Winton Harness, Race 10, Kalua Flyby. This is a really nice horse, actually. I know that um, it, it's run behind some pretty good fillies over the last couple of years. To be honest, he's not given us any notes and I've not gone and looked back <laughs> through it, so I don't know anything about it. But look, Fitzy's uh, hard at work finding some form, and if he's found us something on a Saturday, I'd say just get on. Has his got home at one dollar twenty last week, Piccadilly Pete, on Sunday? Did you get on? It opened at a dollar seventy. Dollar seventy. Yeah, it opened at a dollar seventy. Just oh, got smacked. Sure. Uh, well, they win, they win. We had a few winners last week, and I'm hoping to do it again on Saturday. Otaki meeting for race number six, Elegant Lady. Going a little bit rough here, but the Elegant Lady can get us home over a bit further ground. Was really unlucky last start at a distance short of its best. It's coming up from down south, sneaks under the radar here and doesn't mind it off track as well, so bet with confidence in the wet. We'll have to be at its best to beat all of these, but with a fit horse and Craig Grills on, hopefully Craig can pay the bills. Good man. You're going for three from three over the last uh, two weeks, three weeks, obviously. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, mate. You're two from two, you go for a third. Righto. Uh, I'm going to go tomorrow to Woodville, race four. Uh, I think we might find another Roger James, Robert Wellwood made in a hair uh, in schmooze, only paying $2.70. But if you have a look at its replay from its first race, it, it, it was sort of running around a little bit and then knuckled down late in the last 100 metres and was very, very good to the line. 
Who knows how it goes on a wet track? I don't know how wet it is down there, but you've got to have a crack at it. There's only one other in there that looked any good, so it looks like a pretty even, uh, or sorry, pretty easy maiden field. Uh, but let's see. That's Woodville Race for Schmooze at $2.70. As I say that, I know the goat's got a horse down there, and I hope it's not in that race because I shouldn't have said it's an easy field. If that's the case. Sorry, goat, if that is the case. But, uh, yeah, Schmooze looks a good horse. Good luck if you're having a crack. Right, we've done well to make it here this week, lads. You guys have um, you guys have done well. I'm, I'm happy to have you. Oh, it's been bloody exciting, mate. And this is my last podcast for the season because next week I am down in Queenstown. Maybe send me a link because I'm going to the pub from 2 p.m. next Thursday. So I'll be in a great state I, to jump uh, on the. Oh, yeah, oh, get yeah, in. Good. Can we get some better reception? Reception? Yeah, 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 I'll see. I might take a microphone or something, but uh, maybe even a yeah power bank as well. Where's and, your wedding? Uh, yeah, so I'll be down there, so I won't be in the studio. But uh, big thanks to you two lads. You really held the fort this year. I think we've had... How many podcasts have we done now? Do you know how many weeks in a row? Oh, this must know. be 30-odd. <laughs> it feels yeah. like 100. Okay, so Adam, you got any stats on us? No, you don't. Uh, no I think you'd be pretty close to that. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's been a good summer. It's been August, a great summer. August, September, October, November, December, January, February, <laughs> March, April. Holy shit, boys. It's like nine, nine months. months. Oh, man. Okay, we need a break, don't we? <laughs> Next week's the last one. Had I known that it was going to be your last, Dan mentioned it before, I would have written a little speech to say thanks and all this kind of thing. Ah. Because Did you write anything, Dan? You knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I thought we were going to do another one the week after that to just oh. do a bit of a wrap-up. But uh, no, no, let's write it off. Uh, yeah, I'm okay. happy with that. I'm uh, that's all good stuff. Well, well mate, on behalf of the community, it was an absolute fantastic season. Thank you very much for all your help and all your work this year. Everybody's had a great time. Racing has taken it to an absolute another level, as you have this season, mate. So good on you. Oh, I've got a little bit of a tear in the eye. I'm disappointed this is your last one, honestly. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. Maybe I'll tune in live on the old uh, stream. <laughs> yeah, maybe just to get this back on track get real quick. Off. We've only got three tickets left to the uh, to the harness tomorrow night. So if you want to come along, that's it. There's three tickets. Once they're gone, they're gone. Four drinks, a meal. You get to hang out with us and watch the Punters Club live in full swing. You can see Fitzy banging around the... Uh, <laughs> banging around, not, 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 not the his bedroom. bedroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was fresh fade. He's been getting a new haircut as well yesterday. I can't wait to get down there. Uh, thanks to everybody who's coming along, who gets involved in the Punters Club. Hopefully the Harness Boys do you proud. I'm sure they will. I've been uh, really looking forward to having a crack at this. So they've been doing their homework, and I'm sure they'll do us all proud. And then to everybody going to the Warriors on Saturday as well. We'll see you two lads all over the weekend, and we'll see some of you there this weekend. Otherwise, we'll see you next season. Game, set, and match. Up shut the gate. They're going to do it again. The Kanaka Million goes with and stays with. We're up in front, Delzeo. Long run, but here's the cause now. He's coming. He's going to get there.